All right, hello everybody. Today uh, we're going to do an oil change on this uh, Cummins ISX15 in a uh, 2013 Kenworth T660. Um, so we're going to do an oil change and also a fuel filter change, both primary and secondary. And uh, also a fall on, we're also going to do a service on the uh, Tri-Pack APU. So we'll go ahead and get right into it and I'll show you what, what tools you need and uh, supplies. Um, so you know, you're going to need about 12 gallons of oil for this particular uh, model. Um, it usually holds about 11 gallons. I like to have a little bit extra, so I'd, I'd buy 12 to 14 gallons. Uh, we got a good deal at Costco. We ended up getting this for about $7 a gallon, so there's pretty good deals out there if you look for them. Uh, you're also, I, I like to use uh, the rubber gloves, uh, rip industrial gloves. Don't uh, The nitrile ones are the best ones. Don't use like the powdered, uh, uh, what's the word? Uh, I can't think of the name of a. Uh, Latex, you don't want to use a latex one because oil will dissolve them. <laughs> uh, you're gonna need a drain pan. This is a 15 gallon pan. I would use it at least, this is the minimum size I would use because uh, there's gonna be about 10, 11 gallons come out. If you get any more than that, when you try to drag it out, it's gonna spill all over. Uh, I'm working out here in the driveway. I like to use a piece of plywood so I'm not getting all dirty. Uh, for this particular engine, you're going to need a half inch breaker bar to take the oil plug out. Uh, I use, to take the filters off, I use a big set of channel locks. It's the easy, easiest way to get them off. Uh, filter wrench for the fuel filter over there. And I've got this smaller filter wrench for once I get it broke loose, a little bit more maneuverable than the channel locks. For your fuel, fuel filters, you're also going to need a gallon of uh, fuel to top those off. If not, you're going to have trouble starting the engine later on. But the uh, first thing I like to do is go ahead and uh, drain the engine oil first and get that draining. Let it all drain out when I'm pulling the filters off. That way I put the new fil filters on. Put the, by the time I put the new fil filters on, everything's drained out. And then we're ready to put new oil in. So we're going to drain the oil. So you want to get your pan up underneath here, and uh, you probably want to come around over here. Come around the other side. So you got the plug right here. Like I said this uses a half inch uh, ratchet or breaker bar. I use these breaker bar because it gets pretty tight. Uh, first thing is. Break it loose. Then once you get it loose, bring your pan up under here. And go ahead and spin it out. But um, make sure your pan's over quite a bit because that thing, it'll shoot out about a foot over. Push that over. And then uh, I get the plug out. I usually just take the plug and set it on the axle there. There you go, grab some rags. All right, next thing I do is uh, go ahead and pull the filter off. Um, you got about two inches down here where you can actually get on the filter. Uh, you can use a filter wrench. Like I said, I usually, I hand tighten my filters on. I never tighten them with a filter wrench. And even it, sometimes it's a struggle to take them off with these big channel locks. But, uh, so you put that on there, break it loose. It comes right off. Then um, I like to have my pan close, um, so I'm kind of draining oil at the same time. Cause you're gonna get a little bit. This is truck's been sitting for 
in a 36, 48 hours, so everything should be drained back down, so it shouldn't lose a lot of oil. But if you're, I get to do this in the gravel driveway, that way if I lose a little bit, it kills the grass and all that. But um, if you're doing this inside on nice concrete or something, I'd have uh, some floor dry handy, because you're gonna drip a little bit. Or if you spill it, you can just drop your filter down. And this is gonna have probably quart two quarts oil just drain it out into your pan so that should be good we've got a drain screen in there we let our filters drain out in when they get completely dry after two months or so put them in this scrap metal pile all right now i got a brand new uh, baldwin filter here i like these bald ones i get them on amazon pretty reasonably and they're a good uh, american made filter brand um, i've had pretty good uh, performance out of them uh, i know as far as uh, the fuel filters have been great i've never had any I got a gauge in there that tells what my restriction is, and I've never had any get really high. What I've seen with the uh, the fleet guards and the the Cummins and Napa's and all that, so they're they're pretty good filter and they're reasonably priced. Uh, the first time you do this, you may have to if you can't get the fil you can cross these filters on if like if you go to Baldwin's website, you can put in your original fleet guard number or Detroit number, whoever whatever brand you have, and you can cross those numbers. Then you can take that number you get and you go to Amazon or, or wherever you want to buy your filters at and you can get, probably buy them a lot cheaper than at the dealer. But if you can't see those numbers or you can't make them out, chances are you're going to have to go buy your first set of filters at the dealer. Then once you get those new filters, take a picture of the, the filter number, write them down, whatever, what each filter is. That way later on down the road you can cross them. You can go to Napa and say, I got this uh, fleet guard number. They can cross it and you, you can save about 50% on what you're going to get them from a dealer. So there's a huge savings. There. Like this little change here, my all three, fil two fuel filters, oil filter, I was in about $80 with the bald ones. And uh, we got oil for $7 a gallon. So I mean, this little change here is under $150, which if you go to Petro, T or whoever, wherever you're going or in the dealer, I mean, you're going to be minimum probably 300, if not three to 400. So and save a lot of money that way. But, um. We're going to take the plastic off. Don't take the plastic off until you're ready to use this filter because you don't want to get any contamination on there. So pretty much you want to open it up. And uh, I always fill these filters up so you don't get a dry start. So make sure you have good clean oil. And this thing will take uh, two or three quarts. And you have to fill it a couple of times because it'll get down through all the the filter material and air paper or whatever it is. Yeah, the more you can get in there, the better. That way your engine isn't getting the dry start. By dry, by dry start, I mean your engine's not, uh, when, as soon as you start it, you're not scavenging for oil. You know, so that first initial couple sexen, seconds, uh, you're, not, you're not running with no oil pressure. So basically, I'm almost at two quarts right now.
All right, after you get your filter pretty filled up, uh, make sure your hand's clean, just get a little bit of oil and uh, lubricate that rubber seal. And the reason you do that is that so that way it doesn't, um, when you're tightening it, you get a better seal and it doesn't damage the seal. And also the next time you change your oil, it actually comes off instead of having to, to destroy the filter trying to get it off they will get stuck if they're, if they're dry. Now, get up in there. Let's get it lined up. After you get up on there, you want to take a rag or something and uh, wipe it off, get all the oil off of it for two reasons. One, so you can um, get a nice tight grip on it to get that. I always, you never want to put a wrench, uh, a strap wrench or anything else. You just want to get it as tight as you can, hand tight. Um, don't, you don't want any type of leverage. It's not necessary, but uh, so one, you want to get a good grip on it so you don't want any oil on it. And two, you want to make sure it's clean so that way when you start up, you can check to make sure there's no leaks. Because if you added oil on it, it's dripping down, it's going to be hard to tell if you got a oil that was already there or if you got a, a new leak from when it was running. So I just get it as tight as I can, hand tight. And that's it. So we still got a little bit of oil running out. Um, I usually just go ahead and change them with filters while that's draining. I put the cap on and fill it up last thing. And get a new set of gloves here and we'll take the fuel filters off. Okay, we'll go ahead and take the secondary filter off up here. It's right here. So again, I just use the bigger channel locks. And that's the beauty of not tightening them up over tightening them with a wrench. As a lot of guys run into, they tighten them up with a wrench. They do only two turns with a, with a uh, strap wrench or something else, and they don't come off. You can see how easy I just took that off or broke it loose. Now, this is kind of in an awkward position on this particular truck and engine. Uh, you basically spill fuel everywhere trying to take this off. It's just pretty well unavoidable. The other thing with this, you want to make sure the trucks, I usually like to let this sit before I take mess with the fuel system on these. This is a common rail system, so it is very high pressure. I mean, you can reach pressures of close to 25,000 PSI. So on this particular engine, any type of common rail, don't touch the fuel system unless it's sat. I, I would recommend letting it sit overnight, I mean, just to be safe, because you, you could have pressure on the system. And like I said, when we pull this out, there's no good way to pull this out, so fuel's gonna go everywhere. <laughs> Let's 
So let's set this off to the side for now. All right, we got our new filter here. Um, again, uh, leave it sealed up until you're ready to put it on. Stick that in there so don't pull it. Now these new fuel filters, they come with a little cap. There's a little plastic cap in there. And the reason that is is for when you fill the filter, it's going through the inlet side, so it's filtering the new fuel. So leave that cap in there for now. Make sure you got good clean fuel. And we're gonna fill this up. Then now, before you take the cap off, take a little bit of fuel and, and lubricate the seal, just like we did with the oil filter. And now you can pull this cap out. So you have to pull it. If you don't pull this out, you never get the filter in, because <laughs> that's where the threads are. There, there's a seal in there. So you can throw that away. And now I so said this is a little awkward putting this in. This thing has a lot of threads, so it takes a while to <laughs> get it tight. Okay, now it's snugged up, so again, wipe all the fuel off of it. Wipe all the fuel off your gloves. And we'll do that kind of final tightening. All right. Okay, and lastly, as far as the filters goes, change out the primary filter. Okay, with the uh, primary filter, you have to drain the bottom of it unless you want fuel all over the place. But um, this one has a water sensor on it. That's the first thing you want to do is disconnect that. And just let that hang and then um, you want to drain the fuel out of this so get you an old oil gallon jug or something
and then take a second for all the air then you can drain it out Then after it finishes, make sure you close the drain back. And, and there is a special wrench for these. You can get them, I got this one at Napa. You can get them at Kenworth or Peterbilt or, cause it's a pack guard design. I got a, this truck has a fuel heater on it, so you're going to unplug that as well. <laughs> filter so put that in a box here stuff to burn <laughs> and then have some debris and stuff in there Okay, yeah, make sure the uh, canister is clean inside and out. You might have to blow it out with some brake cleaner or something like that and uh, get all the debris out of there. Uh, next thing, if your filter, make sure your filter came with a new O-ring. If it did, take that off and you can throw that away. And um, you gotta be kind of quick with those O-rings. They will expand. So you wanna do this kind of quick once you start, once you, put, once you touch that uh, O-ring. So you go ahead and put your filter in, the hole goes on top. And grab your new O-ring. And there is a there's a land down there where that goes. So make sure you have it down there in that land and not in the threads or you're gonna have trouble. Um, do you have that? Uh, put a little bit of fuel in here.
put on their hand tight and on this one I will use the filter wrench given the type of filter that it is and I'll just give it about an eighth of a turn that's all it needs and make sure you plug everything back in And just wipe it off. Okay, now by this time our oil should be pretty well done draining. So we'll go ahead and go back down there and um, put our plug back in. And as you can see, this is a 15 gallon drain pan and it's pretty full, so I, I wouldn't recommend anything any smaller or you could have a mess on your hands. So I'll take the breaker bar. get too crazy with it so you don't want to strip it out but um, make sure it's tight and I always like to make sure it's clean so we can check for any leaks but, um, and that's that so now we'll go ahead and put the oil on it all right, we're gonna go ahead and uh, put the oil back in it. Uh, this particular engine, um, if you've never changed oil in the truck before, I'd put like eight gallons in it, then check the dipstick and see where you're at. You don't wanna overfill it. Um, overfilling can cause high crankcase pressure and a lot of other things. So you don't, you never wanna overfill the engine. So always, if you, it's the first time you've done it, kind of be careful. Uh, you might want to start with five gallons, check it. If it ain't touch a stick, then add you know, another gallon or two and just take it slow the first time until you know actually what it is. But um, with this one, I've done this one several times and I know I like to start with 10. So uh, go ahead and take the cap off. And I'll start filling it. All right, I put 10 gallons in. Um, we're gonna go ahead and check the level. So I'll pull it out, wipe it off like you would on your normal pre-trips, if you do a pre-trip. <laughs> a lot of guys, I just see the lights come on and they drive away without the hood coming up or anything. But, um, okay. So right there, we're about halfway up the uh, the hash mark, so we're halfway in between. Um, at that point, I like I'd add about two quarts, half a gallon. So we'll go ahead and do that. And 
And um, for those of you who don't know, if you do or if you don't, but um, this side here, it's got quartz and liters, quartz right here. So you got this line. Um, so we're going to try to get it down the two and add two quartz and see where we're at. about two quarts there so you want to let it let it sit for a second and drain And we're still a little bit low, so I was gonna throw the other two quarts in it. That should probably get us where we need to be. And that pretty well puts us right at the full mark. So I'm right at 11 gallons, and I put almost a um, a gallon into the filter. Um, so for this particular engine, um, you know, 12 gallons. Um, why we're kind of talking about this? I wanted I wanted to talk about oil for a second. Um, as I said, uh, we've got this on sale. This Rotella uh, T4, which it's a conventional oil. It's good oil, I uh, use it in tractors and trucks and all that. I usually like to use uh, Mobile Delvac, um, but uh, we got a pretty good one. Was at Costco, they're having a huge closeout sale and I ended up getting this for $7 a gallon, so I bought it. I wish they had more. I also had, they had four cases, which gave me 12 gallons, which is enough for an oil change. But when you are buying oil, um, if you got a, an emissions engine, a tier four engine has a DPF, meaning if you put DEF in it, or if it has a diesel DPF, um, you want to make sure you're using at least a CJ4 API service uh, number, so CJ4. The newest is CK4, so a CK4 is going to be better. That's And that's basically the big thing now is the ash content, because that ash is what plugs up that DPF. So you want in a, uh, a Tier 4 emissions with a DPF, whether it's diesel or DEF, you want to have at least a CJ4, if not, the, like I said, the newest is a CK4. So that's what you want to look at when you're buying oil. It doesn't really matter. Um, I guess this personal preference, what brand you're using, but make sure it has that, like I said, a CJ4 or CK4 whenever you buy that oil. Even that, that goes, it's, it doesn't matter if it's conventional, um, semi, a semi-synthetic, or, uh, or a synthetic blend, or a full synthetic, they'll still have those same um, service requirements. So that's one thing to keep in mind with the emissions engine. If you've got an, old, that, an older engine that doesn't have any emissions, you can pretty well Put whatever you want like I, said, I use a 1540 um, some some engines out there they, they're wanting a 10 w30 i guess because it's uh the tolerances are a lot tighter for and that goes with the emissions too so i guess whatever whatever your manufacturer is recommended but i run a 1540 so all 
right. Okay. Um, now we got our oil filled up. Uh, we just want to make sure we've our filters are tight. You, if you your first time around, you might want to do a second check on those. Uh, make sure your plugs in. You're not nothing's leaking anywhere. And just do a quick little walk around. And because uh, we want to start the engine up and uh, make sure everything's working right. Uh, again, check your fuel filters. And like I said, just make sure there's nothing visible leaking. Okay, um, a lot of people ask, okay, I got changed my oil at the house or wherever, and now you're stuck, you got 10 or 12 gallons of used oil and you don't know what to do with it. Well, the solution for that is um, if you've got a cordless drill or even a battery fire drill, you can get one of these little pumps. That, uh, I got those at Tractor Supply. I think I paid 10 or $15 for it. And uh, with a cordless drill, um, basically, get a piece of garden hose. I cut off an old, an old junk hose. And um, take a second. Basically, you got your little gauge on the side, the little clear gauge which I showed you all earlier. Um, just pump it back into the, the empty bottles or the gallon containers you just use. And you can take it to Advanced Auto, um, AutoZone, O'Reilly's, most auto parts store they'll take five gallons for free at a time. So you might have to go to two different places, but I know when up here where I live, I've got an O'Reilly's, I've got Advanced Auto, uh, AutoZone, then right down in Kent, I've got three more of the same. So I've basically got six stores that I can get rid of 30 gallons of oil for free in a day. And they'll take it every, they'll take five gallons per day. So um, you can, or even if you only have one store, you can take it, then take the other five gallons the next day and get rid of it all for free. So you don't have to, to worry about stockpiling a bunch of oil or, or a problem of getting rid of it. So that's how you can solve that problem. Um, when I was talking about the oil earlier, the one thing I didn't touch on, um, the cheapest place to get oil other than finding a good deal at Costco or something like that, but uh, Walmart is the cheapest place to get oil bar none. And even a uh, mobile Delvac, I usually get that. A lot of times they have it on sale for $10, $11, where if you go to the truck stop, I mean, you're looking at $25, $25 $26 for a gallon of, of conventional oil, which is unreasonable. Um, but even Rotella, I can get that for $13 at uh, Walmart. And, and also your fuel additives, such as a uh, house, uh, what, I should, what I use in the wintertime, truck stop selling that for $20. Um, for a uh, one quart bottle, I believe, or uh, 60 ounces, I think it is. You get it at Walmart for under $10. So that's your best place. If you're an owner operator trying to save money, buy your stuff at Walmart before you go on the road or stop into a Walmart if you're on the road and you can save basically 50, 60% on all that type of stuff. So, but um, we're gonna go ahead and get all this pumped out and, and get the truck started here, so. Okay, so uh, the last thing we're gonna do here is start the truck up, make sure we got good oil pressure, let it run for about 10 minutes or so, and uh, do a walk around, make sure there's no fuel leaks on the filters anywhere or anywhere else. And um, then after that, you usually wanna let it sit for about half an hour, and then you can go back, because it takes a minimum of a half an hour for all the oil to drain back down on the head and, and all that good stuff, and now the oil gallery, so you can get an accurate, um, to recheck your oil, so an accurate level. So. All right, so we'll go ahead and start the, the truck up and And uh, we'll make sure our oil pressure is coming up. Yeah, mine typically runs about 40 psi, uh, so it's right. It, usually, with a new oil pressure oil change, it'll be a little bit higher, but uh, after it warms up, it'll come back down. Everything looks normal here, so we'll uh, walk around the engine and make sure nothing's leaking. 
basically just want to look at the filters. Make sure nothing's running down the sides. Same looks dry over here. The walker, look at the oil filter. looks pretty good over here as well so uh, that pretty well concludes the uh, an oil change and fuel filter change um, next project we're gonna do we're gonna do a service on the uh, tri pack APU and uh, we'll get that video out there as well next so thanks for watching